lot of times when we look at investment metrics, we're looking at things like internal rate of return or cash on cash uh, return, things of that nature. And many people fail to realize that there are gaps in those different types of analysis, right? So for example, cash on cash return, that's really a one year metric period. We're only looking at one year's cash flow compared to the investment amount that we put in for that year. That's a one year return, cash on cash return. So we can't really look at a six year investment or a seven year investment and run a cash on cash return and actually get a lot of the data that we're looking for. Other things like the gross rent multiplier for those who use gross rent multiplier. Gross rent multiplier is quite literally just the total rent multiplied. That's it. It takes in account none of the expenses, none of the vacancy, none of those other things, which makes you wonder like, why would you even use it? Which is why I don't personally use it, but many people do. So today, what we're actually going to be talking about is something that encompasses all of these things. And it's something called capital accumulation. So what is capital accumulation? All that basically says is, hey, look, if we're going to compare two different investments, investment A to investment B, then what we want to do is we want to see at the end of the day, which one is going to have the most money, which one's going to have the most money stacked up. So with capital accumulation, what we're going to say is, all right, all things being equal, if investment A had $15,000 and investment B had $10,000, how do we see what the total amount would be if we can make these apples to apples or oranges to oranges, right? How can we make these similar? So this differs greatly from IRR. If you aren't familiar with internal rate of return, I have made a video about that, but we can, we can spend more time really breaking down IRR um, in another video. Um, what IRR does not do is it does not take into account the disparities, right? The difference in the investment amounts from the beginning to the end, right? Whether it's 10,000 or it's 15,000. It doesn't take necessarily into account the holding period. We might have five years in one and seven years in another. It doesn't matter because the IRR is a percentage. It's based on the performance. So you could have a 10% IRR on something that you held for three years or one that you held for five years. You can have a 10% IRR on a $10,000 investment or a $15,000 investment. The capital accumulation says, all right, well, if you have A and B, 10,000 and 15,000, let's make these things equal. So the first thing that we do is we have to find what our reinvestment rate is. Now, what a reinvestment rate means is if the cash is not in this one investment, investment A, let's call it, if it's no longer an investment A, we have to put it into another investment so it can grow. So what is that second investment going to be for us? Now, in this situation, this is the conversations that investors are having all the time, right? Hey, I got $20,000 where I'm going to put it. Where, where, where am I going to put in this real estate property? Am I going to put it in stocks? Am I going to put it in bonds? What is the case? And so when we look at the opportunity there, typically we have multiple investment options and we have to decide where is our risk threshold. So let's say our reinvestment rate is going to be something like in bonds, right? Or it could be stocks, but something where we know we're going to get 6%, 6% return. Okay. So we look at this, these two investments, they're both real estate properties. One requires 15,000. The other one requires $10,000 to go in. Now we know that we have another vehicle, another investment that can give us, let's say 6% return. Well, how do we make these even? Well, if we have $15,000 regardless, right? And investment B needs a total of 15,000, but investment A only needs 10,000. Well, that means we can take that extra $5,000 and invest it at a 6% return. And so what we do is we take that extra 5,000, we invest it at a 6% return. And then at the end of that holding period, whether it's five years or three years, whatever, because they both need to be equal. At the end of that period, we're now going to take both of those returns of the original 10, 5,000 at 6% and add them together. Now, whatever that total dollar amount is, that is our total capital accumulation. So you can see that by doing something like this, now we can see what's the total dollars of investing in this first real estate project with 10,000 here and 5,000 over in this other investment. Or if we just dumped all 15,000 into this other real estate deal, which one is going to make more money at the end of the day? That's what capital accumulation is. And so it's a very important factor as you know, when you're working with somebody who's helping you with investment analysis, when you're working with somebody, or if you are the broker, 
and you're representing your client on a commercial deal, or if you are the financial advisor and you're working with your client, understanding the goals. What is the goal? A lot of times people will say, man, I need a return of 12% or I need a return of 8%. Great, but why? Because the 12% is just one piece of the overall puzzle. Is it 12% that you need or is it a dollar amount that you need? And if it's a dollar amount, why? Matter of fact, if it's a dollar amount, do you need it to come out monthly or can you wait 10 years to receive it? All of these things matter when we start evaluating different types of investments and we understanding the, the different metrics or measures uh, that we need to use. So anyway, guys enjoyed this. Please go ahead, hit the like, hit the subscribe. I mean, we out here on the road making videos, man, making content. So hit the like, hit the subscribe. Uh, it's been a while since I said this, so I got to remember how it goes. If you want to continue to support Mike, go and hit the like, right? And then um, if you guys are interested in getting any type of bookkeeping services, uh, investment analysis services, anything like that, you guys can also reach out to the company. Uh, email directly at info at g2businesssolutions.com or you guys can find the scheduling link near the description down below. All right, guys, talk to you guys soon.